so happy today to have uh, Reverend Pastor Manuel Retamosa from St. Andrew's Lutheran Church, our partner in ministry here in San Diego. And today invited him to come and to share with us a little bit about his work with the American Native American Indian, American Indian <laughs> Alaskan Native mm -hmm. Lutheran Association, mm -hmm. and to share a little bit about his experience as a Native person mm -hmm. from Mexico. And uh, if you remind me again, what tribe is Cherokee you? on your yep. mother's, mother's side? side? Yep, first mother's generation Mexican American. Yeah, my dad was born in Tijuana, and my mom was born in in Oklahoma. Ah. So, part of the Cherokee Nation. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Well, I stumbled, you heard me stumble on the Native, no? American, American Indian, Indian Native, Ala Alaskan, Alaskan Native. Native. And yep. I wrote in an email, I got that botched up, and you'd, you said you'd explain to me uh, what that, why that name is the way why it is. is. <laughs> well, can we start yeah. today? With you, Pastor, yeah, so talking about that? I am the Vice President of American Indian Alaska Native Association of the ELCA. And the reason it is American Indian instead of Native American is because we had an um, Anglo church. White. Who, yeah, wanting to be <laughs> part of the association and, and showed up to our meetings. To, to This is before my time. Um, to our meetings and said they were Native because they're more than one generation in the U.S., so they were Native Americans and wanted to be part of the association, but they are white. Mm -hmm. And so we had to change, they had to change the name to American Indian so that it would be clear this is American Indian, Alaskan Native yeah. Association. Yeah. And what is the work of the association? Good, yeah. So the association, uh, one of the major pieces, um, at least the reason I'm vice president and took that position is that we want to keep our um, Native ministries um, network with one another so we can support each other because so many of us, you know, in particular, when you think about South Dakota, North Dakota, and Montana, and how big those states are, how separated those ministries are from one another. Um, and so to network together, um, to serve one another, um, and also within that too, um, to serve the larger church and understanding what, you know, the history and the culture of Native people um, in the church. And the Lutherans have had a long history here in the United States working alongside and, and um, serving alongside the Native population. Mm. So yeah. that's part of, our, part of our work. And, um, and, uh, and also, you know, we'll be at the, uh, the assembly, the churchwide assembly will be a major piece of that assembly will be our association and what the work that we do you'll see this year that we've not seen in the past oh. we'll see more of that this year good this good. coming assembly not this yeah. year but yeah well and to be honest part of what sparked my interest in speaking with you mm -hmm. is was orange shirt day mm -hmm. and yeah. about the children mm -hmm. in canada which we know happened here in the united states too mm -hmm. and i heard you once reference your cousin was mm -hmm. she part of one of those boarding schools life or yeah my so I have cousins um, my family uh, came across in the Trail of Tears just a few generations ago um, and settled in Oaks Oklahoma um, and so um, they I have older cousins um, I mean I they're not first cousins they would be like second and third cousins but mm -hmm. we have big fans our, yeah they're just cousins Anyway, they were they went off to boarding school, and in fact, our own the president of our association, she was in a boarding school as well, John Conroy, so Pastor John Conroy okay. was also. So it's very recent history, and that's you know for me so much of what I know to be native, you know that my cousin went to boarding school. It was like, well, that yeah, that's what happened. We didn't think about any of it, um, and we also were aware of the abuses that went on. But there's so much of abuse and neglect and of our native people that have gone on in our country's history that was like, well, yeah, that's just part of who we are. And so um, when, the, when the Canadian First Nations 
Um, the bodies that were found, the 255 bodies of these children that were found at the schools um, were found and you know, we started the Orange Banner. And just to be clear too, the reason it's an Orange Banner, and this is something I think that's kind of skipped over sometimes, is because there was a young girl who was taken from her family and brought to an Indian school, Indian boarding school, and she had an orange shirt that was a gift. Um, and uh, the orange shirt was removed or torn off of her um, so that she would conform to the, the uniforms that mm. they were expected to wear. And so she lost that orange shirt. And right. so that's why that color orange, and that's why the orange banner is because of that. So, right. And we also know, I mean, we knew this, and we know this, I and mean, it's just like that there are going to be bodies that will be found at our schools here in the U.S. It's not just in Canada. Yeah. It's, and they will be, will be found here as well. Right, right. So time will... My grandmother always said, be sure your sins will find you out. <laughs> and that's kind yeah. of what's, what's happened. You know, so, I... It, Trail of Tears, what year was that? 30s, 1830s okay. and 40s. Yeah. In that, and it wasn't just one trail. It was several trails that were made as people, as the Indian Removal Act came so in. So that, that was my great-great-grandpa mm -hmm. was coming from Sweden. Mm -hmm. Well, your great-great-grandparents were on the Trail Being of Tears. Being moved, yeah. yeah. Being removed off our land. Right, yep. quite a different experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pastor Manuel, you also shared with me some of the places you grew up mm -hmm. and the sort of revelation as you've gotten older, like, oh, about in the East Bay. And yeah, the, yeah, the I grew up, grew up yeah, I grew up in the East Bay, and to, I always knew two things. I always knew I was Cherokee. That was something that we talked about as family. In fact, my, you know, my grandparents... Um, spoke a little bit of Cherokee and would teach me as a child numbers and letters and um, the syllabi and um, and it was just that's just what it was you didn't think about it being well that's you know native or whatever also in the same thing it's like well I always knew we talk about land acknowledgments I always knew like I was I was raised on a lonely land and that was just it was I didn't even think about it it was that's what it was and um, that's what my, my mother taught me. So, and not that there was any kind of land acknowledgement. We just knew that's what it was. Yeah. So, yeah. You grew up with an indigenous family from Mexico and from mm -hmm. the Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. How does, do you have a sense of how that intertwines with your experience of faith and sometimes how that made uh, uplift and or contrast mm -hmm. with what you run into it in the church today mm -hmm. or maybe back at seminary I don't know yeah I mean that's all of that I mean that's a life experience to mm -hmm. answer that question um, yeah because there a minute are, and a half yeah <laughs> pieces <laughs> there are pieces of it you know, strewn throughout but it's only in um, looking back that I get that perspective right. of where those touch points were in my faith. Now, I was raised American Baptist, and the the part of the reason that happened is that my grandmother, my grandma Mayfield, my mom's mother, was baptized at Ebenezer Lutheran Church in Oaks, Oklahoma. Um, when she was twelve, her baby brother, who was also baptized at Ebenezer, um, died of some form of dysentery. This was about 1917, um, and then her mother died as well. Mm. And so following the passing of those two, my great-grandfather left the Oaks community and took his one daughter, the one child, out of the community and moved about 25 miles as a crow flies, but out of that native community and raised her out there. And so then he started attending Baptist church there. And, mm. um, just out, just, I mean, Tahlequah is our tribal headquarters. Um, the next town east or west of Telequa is Holbert. And Holbert's where my grandmother was raised and where my mother spent most of her young life too. But it was, a, you know, there was some Cherokee there, but it was predominantly, predominantly white mm -hmm. and Baptist, Southern Baptist. Yeah. And so um, 
my coming to the Lutheran church, which is a weird, I mean, it's a strange thing because I said I'd never be Lutheran. Um, and I look back and think, well, maybe that's where the roots are in that baptism. I went back to Ebenezer, found their big green book and found my, my, um, my great uncle and my grandmother's name in the book and my great grandmother's name as well in that book from their baptisms at Ebenezer. Mm. So, I mean, it's part of my roots and Ebenezer it continues to be that native Lutheran voice, uh, one of the many voices that we have in the church. Mm. And um, so there are parts of, of me that um, in worship that I know that um, this is part of, I mean, the blessing of the animals and so think about that that's coming up here. For mm. us, it's this weekend. Um, and you know the animals and nature and all that I mean they, I don't want to romanticize that but that is part of my worship as well yeah. you know yeah. it isn't separate yeah. you know yeah. from my faith yeah. so Jenny mm -hmm. you want to before we go today anything just you want to let the good people at first know about mm -hmm. either as a word of encouragement to press on or as we mm -hmm. attempt to improve our awareness mm -hmm. and our understanding and the repentance that's required too yeah. uh, for, for what has happened mm -hmm. and that the church has been part of. Yeah. Um, well, I think I shared with you earlier how, um, well, for me, looking back at my, my culture and my story, not knowing, okay, not saying, well, that's native until afterwards, like mm -hmm. understanding that perspective until you get out of your culture, looking back into it. Mm -hmm. And as I share with you, well, the work that I've done with youth over the last 17 years has been taking the youth and sometimes our congregational members out of their comfort zone, outside of the comfort of our own culture to another culture and examining that to reflect upon the original culture that we came from and then and then cherishing those parts of our culture that we often don't even think about you know i hear people often say i don't have any culture well you do yeah. you just have not stepped out of yourself to reflect back on what that culture is and yeah. so i'm hoping that as we become to understand all the culture and history and both the damage that was done but also the good that has come about too and the good that will come about in the future um you know i'm hoping that in in understanding all that the the good will come and that's my that's kind of the hope in the faith that we that we share yeah. you know um no if you so in way of support too is to you know look up the associations study what you know it's a short little read on our elca website um but also you know our, you know we have a facebook page and you can go to that and see what's going on and even today my son has a post that went on the elca facebook page and there were a couple trolls that went up and said some very negative things my son's only 18 years old and for these people to be that angry and venomous about talking about indigenous people's day you know the comments of support and the comments of understanding mean so much to me. And I know it'll mean a lot to my son as well. So, I mean, look look for those places, look for those posts and and support us even just by clicking the like. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and look for more information to come and presentations as well mm -hmm. as we um, move throughout this year and out of this, this time of COVID. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for being taking the time mm -hmm. to come to our home and yep. to be part of our worship today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad. It's good to be part of your worship. I've been here 17 years, and I have not yet to be part of a Sunday morning worship with you all, oh. First Lutheran. And I no, you just look it. forward to the time <laughs> when I can actually be present with you we'll all in worship. All right. So, all right. thank you. Thank you.